come together to say goodbye to Alan. And I just wanted to share with you a few words this morning. I do hope bring you some comfort during this very difficult time in your lives. Time has taken me from you, although not very far. I'll be watching through the sunshine and through the brightest star. I'll be watching all of you from the heavens up above. So take good care of each other and carry all my love. If you're ever wondering if I'm there, here is where you can start. Take a look inside yourself, deep within your heart. I'll always be your friend, so anytime you need me, close your eyes and I'm back again. I know this poem is short, but it's also very meaningful. It reminds us that although we're gonna be apart from Ellen for a short time in this life, our faith uh, does assure us that we will see her again. One of the hardest parts of today is that physically you will have to say goodbye to her, um, but it's very uh, important to remember moving forward that we can all speak to Ellen every single day. Um, we can do this together as a family through prayer.
want to say we thank God for her life. We thank God for what she has done. And we just want to send her home amen, in style. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Just let her know that we appreciate the life she has lived. And many times, uh, this is a time where a lot of folks will bring all kind of flowers and um, give all kind of condolences and all kind of things to, um, to, the, to the, our loved ones that departed. But while we're still in the land of the living, that's what we should do. We should celebrate each other. Celebrate each other's life. Celebrate our accomplishments. Um, just like how they do it in, in the Juno's Award or whatever, they celebrate each other. We have to celebrate each other. We may not be singers or musicians or whatever, we should celebrate family. Celebrate each other, which is so important. Shall we all stand? Hallelujah, I'm free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. Come on, would you bow your head to us? Father, we thank you, Lord God, today. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad with you. As we come now, Lord God, to celebrate the life of Sister Helen, Lord God, Winter. Winter, Lord God, you have seen her, you have known her, Lord God, you have seen her life. And it pleased you now to take her from us, from this world. You know what her life was, was like, Lord God. It is your will, Lord God, for you to take her at this time. I don't know if she was hurting, Lord God. I don't know what she was going through the last years of, of her life. But it pleased you in your divine providence to take her out of this world. Right now she can look back and say, I'm free. I'm finally free. And that's why, Lord God, many of us are still here. Some of us are suffering. Some of us are hurting, Lord God. When we look around in this crazy time, this crazy world that we're living in, but right now she can say, hallelujah, I'm free. No longer bound, Lord God. No sickness in her body anymore. You have given her a body, Lord God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I pray, oh God, that she soars to you. Hold her in the palm of your hands. Ah, uh, you know her life, Lord God. Everything about her, Lord God. Hold her in the palm of your hands. I pray, oh God, that you'll help us that are left behind to get ready to leave this world. When it's our time, Lord God, to leave, I pray we will be found worthy. I pray, oh God, that we'll go with you when you come back, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that you'll save us, that you'll guide us, that you'll protect us. Remember, Lord God, the loved ones that are left behind. Remember the bereaved family, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that you remember them, that you'll guide and protect them, Lord God. Speak to them even when they go to their beds at night, Lord God. Come by their bedside. Encourage them. Those who were with her in the last moments, her last years, Lord God. Those who have been around with her for how many years have seen her, known her, Lord God. I pray, oh God, in their hour of belief, their hour of, of, of sorrow, Lord God. It's not always easy to lose a loved one to the grave. But I pray, oh God, that you remember them. Those who are left behind, remember them. God, and protect, Lord God. Speak to them as we give you praise. Bless now as we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. For the evening train will be too late. I'm going home on the morning train.
company. Uh, there was like some Saturdays I would bring some groceries for her just to visit her, see how she's doing, and she'd always be happy, she'd always be joyful, and she'd always share her stories about Jamaica and her past, and why don't you go back to enjoy her time, open up a shop and sell whatever she wants to bring back. <laughs> so, she will be missed. And after, I am here to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and, ang and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my good deeds to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. That thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in inequity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophecy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, that then that which is part, that which is in part, will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, <coughs> but the greatest of these is love. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I would be remiss if I didn't come up here and say something on behalf of Helen. Every time that she would come to the shop, uh, to the other fashion, she would make us laugh so much. <laughs> she always said, you see me now? Tomorrow you won't see me how I will be in Jamaica. <laughs> Rest assured, she is heading up in Jamaica. Paul, the Apostle Paul says one thing, eloquently says one thing by the Spirit. To be absent from the body is to be mm -hmm. present with the Lord. So we know she's not here. She's in a better place today. She's in a better place today. And I'm here to tell you, to comfort this family, you know, because we're living in perilous times. We're living in a, my mother always said we're living in the last days. Today I'm here boldly say to you, we're living in the last of the last days. The last days. We're at the cusp before the sky is going to burst open and our Lord and Savior is going to come back. But for you that were left behind today, I want to comfort you. I want to say a word of comfort to you. Sister Helen is in a better place. Now, we have our work cut out today. We see, you know, uh, when we look around today, everybody is in line. The head of government are confused. We, the church is literally shut now. Well, we are the church of Jesus Christ. And we, the church is not a monument. The church is a movement. And so, Nothing can stop the church. Nothing should stop the church. When people say, oh, the church is shut. No, we are the church. Amen. And we're going to press in and press on as this Jesus Christ. I want to comfort the family. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. She's in a better place. Thank you so much. Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning. Um, I don't have much to say, 
First, I would love to thank you all for everything you have done, and thank you, Philip, for taking care of my aunt. And I'm sorry I am here on this occasion. I mean, I'm sorry I meet you on this occasion, but it is, it is, um, it is not our will, it is the Lord's will. So I'm happy I'm still here to meet you. And thank you all for coming. My aunt, I am the last one for my mom, so I don't know much about my aunt because I'm the last one and I don't remember when she comes to Canada. But from, from what I understand, I know she is a nice person, person and I know she always like helping people. That's what I heard. Amen. So now she's not here with us anymore and I wish if I could see her some other day to talk to her for she to tell me about her past and about her life and about how she spent her time here in Canada because I haven't seen her for her to tell me anything about her life. So I'm happy I'm here to celebrate the um, ceremony with you guys and thanks again for everything. God bless you all. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Some sweet day I'll be going away.
Sister Helen is like, um, she's a very, she was, I should say, a yes. very special person, mm -hmm. right? And I met her maybe about 20 years ago. All right. And when I met her, she was, she was um, sewing, she was a dressmaker. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I do the same thing, I'm in designing too. So mm -hmm. from day one, we kind of meshed yeah. together, as they say in Jamaica. And um, I got to know her over the years. Over the years I've known her, she has blossomed in everybody's life, I'm telling you. Everywhere I go, I hear them talk about her, oh, she was so good. And the amount of things and people that she helped over the years, it has been a blessing to many people. Wow. Yeah, she okay. would go like, I remember she told me a story, not even she, a lady told me a story when she came by, the, when Sister Ellen came by the store, and she told me that, I was doing some work for um, a friend of hers and they would start talking about Sister Ellen. That time she, uh, she got it sick um, at home. Mm -hmm. And she told me that while she was, when she just came to Canada, she was on the road. She didn't have any, it was winter time and she didn't have any winter shoes, right? And Sister Helen would, saw her on, this, on the road and she called her and she, she was a young girl about 18 or 20 years old and she didn't have her shoes at the time. And Sister Ellen called her and said, what happened to your shoes? Because she didn't have any shoes. And Sister Ellen took her and take her to the mall and bought her brand new, very expensive winter shoes. Right? And she said she never forget that. Amen. There were people who told me that while she was alive, they lost, I know a friend of mine, she lost her apartment. She couldn't pay her mortgage and they chowed her out of the home and she um, had nowhere to stay. And Sister Ellen asked her, she told Sister Ellen, and Sister Ellen said, no problem. And she was living for sister, with Sister Ellen for one year she spent at Sister Ellen's home. Mm. One whole year, she didn't pay any rent, and then she got her foot back on, on her feet. And then after that, her daughter was also sick. Sister Ellen would babysit her daughter too. And she would do countless things. People were just telling me stories after stories how wonderful she was. And she has touched so many lives over the years. Everyone has nothing to say but good things about her. Mm -hmm. She's a blessing, she's a light that will always shine in our hearts, I'm telling you. Every day I think about her, I remember we, we go so many places together. Even Fiji and I, we went to on a cruise, like down by the lake, um, the church had a cruise and we took her and um, this music started playing, we were at the table and the music started playing and all of a sudden I saw her get up, she just sprang up and started dancing. And she was dancing and skipping and everybody was forming a circle around her and I'm saying, oh my God, this little lady is so energetic and she was dancing like crazy and I couldn't get her to stop. And I didn't want to dance and she was putting my hand and said, Philip, come on, come, let's dance. And I'm saying, because I didn't want to drop, you know, to be honest here, because she was so frisky. And I said, mama, she said, no, come, let's dance, let's dance. And she would drag me up and then I started doing some little moves and man, she, she, was, she did, I tell you, I couldn't catch up with her. As simple as she was, mm -hmm. I couldn't catch up with her. And I just kept on laughing and I said, man, we had such a wonderful time, you know? Yeah. And it's been over the years, man. I'm telling you, I really do love her. I really, I'm blessed to meet a nice lady like this. Honestly to God, you know, she meant a lot to me. And it hurts me to know that. I know she's in a better place, but uh, when she, um, in the later days of her life, you know, I didn't get to see her, to be honest with you she was in the nursing home and she got sick very bad yeah? and then they told me that um, she's not doing well you know so I said okay then so they asked me if I could come and visit her I said sure I want to come and see her but because of the pandemic I couldn't get to go and see her so they said uh, because she got so sick they said this is an opportunity for you to come because they will allow you to come and visit her so it was a Friday night, a Friday evening, and I said, okay then, you know what, I'll come on the Monday, because Mondays I'm always off. And I was talking to the director at the nursing home, and I told him, say, you know what, I'll come down and visit her on Monday. And he said, okay. So I spoke to her sister, Miss Gurley, in Jamaica, to give her some heads up of how she was doing. And uh, I said, mom, I call her mom too, even though she's your aunt, you know, I always like to, like seniors, I always call them, due to respect, mom or dad, you know? So I said, mom, you know what? Your sister is not doing good, you know, because they called me from the nursing home and they said she's really sick, God, you know, but I'm gonna look for her on Monday and when I go, I'm gonna take a picture with her and send it to you. So she said, fine. 
Yeah, I'll let you see how she looks in the nursing home. And I'm telling you, the same day where I'm talking to her, about um, arranging the time to go on Monday, I was waiting back, so they said they will get back to me from the nursing home and tell me the time to come on Monday to see her. So I said, okay, no problem. And about three hours after that, the nurse from the nursing home called me and she said, Philip, I said, hi, how are you? Her name, this nurse was Verona, Verona. she was from Jamaica too. Yes. And they always take care of her because there's a lot of Jamaicans who work at the yes. nursing home. So they yes. always look out for her for me and take care of her, they comb her hair, dress her up nice, yes. you know, and take care of her, make sure she eats and all of that. And I said, Philip, I said, yes, she said, how are you? I said, I'm doing fine. She said, you know what, Ellen just passed away, you know. I said, really? I, she said, yes, she just passed away. I said, I can't believe it. She said, I didn't even get to see her. And she said to me, Philip, um, don't worry, when you go, um, it's sad to say, but you will get to see her. She said to me, like, you'll get to see her at the nurse at the funeral home. And I'm saying, that's crazy, bro, because she's dead, you know? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. But anyways, I know maybe it was a shock or something. And it hurt my heart to call back this girl in Jamaica and tell her, and say, Mommy, you know what happened? The same day it happened, you know? The same day, everything, all of this happened. And she said to me, that, I said to her, Mom, you know what? Um, Sister Ellen is gone, you know. She said, what? She said, I said, she just passed away. And that picture I tell you about, I won't be able to take it, and I didn't even get to see her. And, you know, I felt so bad, you know, but to be honest with you, I am happy that it wasn't the COVID that killed her, to be That's honest right. with you. Yes. Honest to God, you know. And I told her that, you know, that it, it, it's sad, but, you know, she's gone, you know. And I never get to even touch her because when I went to the nursing home because of the COVID, I couldn't touch her. Like she was there and I had to stay like seven feet apart or six feet. And I'm saying, this is crazy. Uh -huh. And there was another lady there like a supervisor. And I tried to touch her one time. No, 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 no. And I'm saying, but it, and it really hurts my heart because up in now, I didn't even get to touch her to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I used to go there, I used to, you know, and it's sad, you know, but as I say, God is always in control. No matter how we are, the Lord knows best, you know? But I, one thing I know for sure, she is in heaven, honest to God. The amount of good that she has done for life and many people in this world, a lot of us, I pray, would, I wish we could all do the same and think the same. She never looked down at anyone. She was always there. Once you're in need, she's there for you. Once you are in need, she's there for you. She, she's always there with open arms, you know? willing to accept you as you are and to do anything that she can to make your life much easier and better and to put a smile on your face, you know? Mm. She's a blessing and I really do miss her and I thank God that I met her and um, I pray that her soul will rest in peace Amen. and I thank the Lord again that I really met a true, wonderful lady. She's like a mom to all of us and she <coughs> blessed all of us. I just want to say the Lord is my shepherd for her and then that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of our Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, can we all stand? Today, a soldier has gone home. Amen. A soldier has gone home. Someone who loved the Lord. Amen. And we've come to celebrate her life. We've come to talk about her, what her life was like. And just listening to Brother Vassal, she was a wonderful woman. Yes. A very caring woman that loved people and that want to help people. And she has helped many people, many people. She 
reminds me of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. And Christ's ministry when he was on earth. He talked about the Good Samaritan. He said that I was hungry and he fed me not. I was thirsty and he gave me not, not to drink. I was naked and he clothed me not. And he said, depart from me, I know you not. And so they said, when, when have we seen you naked? And we didn't call you. When have we seen you thirsty? We begin to drink. You have not ever done it to me. You have not ever done it to me. Sister Helen of thine unto them. Give water to the thirsty. Give a home to the homeless. Gave food to the hunger. Gave shoes to those who had none. That's a beautiful soul. And so because she was a beautiful soul, soldier truly has gone home. At this time, we want just to give her a moment of silence for her life and the life that she has lived. was here right now, she would say to you, he's never failed me. Yeah. <laughs> he's never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me such a lovely pair of people to, to, well, why, why do you take them so short so their life has lived the, the, they were still living more life to, to live and you took them why do you take them and yet still you find the gunman the wicked man live a long long life and you answer God why God why why do you take them and God turned around and said to you because they were the only one that was ready because they were ready because I got work for them to do when they get home. So I took them home. 
Amen? Amen. So he's never failed us yet. So she can, Ella can say, Jesus Christ, my God, has never failed me yet. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. This might be a little rocky, but bear with me. Now, my earliest memory of Ellen Wickham, we call her Auntie Cooley, was when I was about three and a half to four years old. I don't recall hearing about her prior to that time, but I clearly remember feeling extremely excited about the fact that she was coming from Kingston. And Kingston is a major city for us in Jamaica. We call it town, right? She was coming to visit us in the country. Now, at that time, Auntie Cooley was the only aunt that we'd heard about. Of course, we have other aunts, but I guess we were too young to, to, uh, to be aware of, of, of the others. Now, when Auntie Cooley arrived, she immediately became our favorite. <laughs> Particularly because she was the most beautiful woman we have ever seen. And she was our aunt. In return, we became her favorite nieces and nephews. And those bonds lasted until November 6, 2020, the day she died. And now, beyond. Ellen Witcher was born in the cool of the day February 8, 1944. She was born in the parish of Trelawney, that is in Jamaica, in an extremely friendly district, ironically named Warsaw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen was the third of three girls to her mother, Catherine, Catherine Genus. And she was the second child and the only girl born to her father, Albert Witcher. Because Ellen was the last child to both parents, she became the pet. But Ellen had other characteristics that made her favorite. Ellen was beautiful and attractive. She had the most adorable smile and the most vivacious and pleasing personality. Not only did everyone loved Ellen, Ellen loved everyone. Ellen would pick, quickly befriend you and gush you with so much love. You would be left believing that you were her one and only best friend. <laughs> But no, you are not. There are possibly hundreds, even thousands. That was Aunt Cooley. Ellen would go beyond the call of duty for her family 
kind of a change. As a child, Ellen attended the Warsaw Poly School. After graduating, she studied dressmaking and other crafts. She was quick to learn, and to learn she did. But my mother, Ellen's eldest sister, said that Ellen was naturally gifted. She said Ellen was a naturally gifted craftswoman. Ellen weaved, crocheted, upholstered, all without formal or informal training. Ellen was simply a natural. But Ellen was not only gifted, she was also adventurous. Ellen's adventure started in Kingston, Kingston, Jamaica. And you know, at a time when most rural folks were intimidated by the city life, Ellen packed her belongings and headed for the big city. She quickly established herself in the city, and very soon, Helen's dressmaking was as busy as an enterprise, as busy an enterprise as any in the city. But nothing was big enough for Helen. No sooner than we were getting used to how well she was doing in the city, Ellen migrated to the Turks and Caicos Islands. But the Turks and Caicos Islands soon became too small for her. <laughs> Canada, <laughs> she said, would be her final destination. Not literally, but so it went. Ellen moved to Canada and first settled in Mississauga but later relocated to Toronto. In Toronto, she quickly established her dressmaking enterprise. In Canada, as elsewhere, Ellen quickly made lasting friends. And I've, I've heard some of you testify to that. Here in Canada, Ellen has long cherished her many friends, especially those at her church. She spoke very highly of her church and the members of her church. She spoke about her pastor. She spoke highly about the church family and about her pastor. Every time she would visit us in Jamaica, she would be talking about those things. In fact, she said she had a plan to open a home for the elderly and that would be in Jamaica. And her church would be an essential part of that plan. Up until the point of her death, of her illness rather, Ellen was still focused on such a plan. Ellen was always busy planning, doing, helping, befriending, but in the midst of life, there is death. Yeah. However, the tragedy of death is blunted by the gift of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And our wish is that on Kuli, And of us remaining one, we'll find such a gift and be reunited in the earth made new.
may our Queen find rest in peace in Jesus our Lord. Over in the by and by, we'll talk it over, my sweet Lord and I. I'll ask the reason He'll tell me why When we talk it over In the by and by We'll talk it over In the by and by, we'll talk it over, my sweet Lord and I, I'll ask the
cannot prove to me that when you die, you go to heaven. No one can prove to me. Matter of fact, a lot of folks can't prove to me there is a God. There's a hell, there's a heaven, there's a devil. And when you think about that, many of us have given our lives to Christ and we call us Christians, which Christians means Christ-like, being like Christ. We want to be like our master, our king, our savior. And we go to church. Some people say, why are you going to church? Why do you keep your life to Christ? Well, you can't really prove. You have a testimony that your body, you were sick and you got healed. But can you prove? And mo most of you have ever, ever seen him. And that's why faith comes in. And that's why Jesus Christ said to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen him, but yet they believe. We weren't there when Christ walked on the water. We weren't there when the leper was cleansed. We were there when the lame walked and the dumb spoke. But we believe it. We believe it was so. And that's faith. And you cannot please God unless you have faith. Because he that cometh to God must first believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. If you want to know God, he said, if you knock, it shall be open. If you seek, you shall find. If you ask, it shall be given. And therefore, when you begin to ask, God has got no other choice but to bless you. Amen. Amen. And we have many questions that we want to ask God about. But we'll talk it over in that great by and by. And so therefore, we've got to make sure of our call and election. We've got to make sure it's correct. Because we don't want to find out when we begin to say there's no God. We don't want to find out when your eyes are closed off in death and realize there is a God. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Amen. So now is the time. The word of God said you have to save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself. Never a time, church, never a time are we live into a situation like this. We have not been, we're not old enough to know when smallpox and all these sicknesses was on the, in the world and that has killed millions. We were not there. And so therefore, never, we have never seen this pandemic and this epidemic in the world before. Everybody's running afraid, everybody's scared, running scared. As a matter of fact, we have, I've never seen it in our churches today, the way it is. But many folks are afraid to come to church. Many folks are afraid to gather together. Even though the word says you should not forget to assemble yourself together. But the world is making the children of God run afraid, run scared. Yes, the word says, God said, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. So therefore, we don't, we don't run from no devil. Amen. Amen. Because we know that our life is hid in Christ, in God. So God is in control. No matter what's going on in our world today, and I, and I look at you folks today, even, I've never seen this before. Amen. No one, no one saw this coming. And now we, we, we sit together. In heavenly places, we're in masks. But we, they, they, they try to tell us you can't sing when you're coming to the house of God. When God requires his praises. We can't sing anymore. Give God praise. We can't step out of a praise and step into worship. And they begin to give God praise. Because we know how good God has been to us. Man, we, we, I don't know about you, but I don't go into a dead church. Uh, my God is alive and well, and so when I get to church, i got to give God some praise. Yeah. i got to give God a shout, yeah. and in my worship, because my victory is in my praise. Yeah. My victory is in my worship, yeah. and therefore I, I know God for myself. Yeah. Because you were there, church, when you picked me up on my bed, my bed when I was sick. You were there when he baptized me in water. You were there when he baptized me with the Holy Ghost. 
close. Uh, but because God has been good to me, I can't keep quiet. Uh, because I got a fire that shut up in my bowl. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, when you think about it, even Jeremiah would write. Uh, and Jeremiah, man, Jeremiah said, man, I'm upset with God. Uh, and therefore, I'm not going to preach no more in this man's name. Uh, I'm not going to prophesy about who God is. Uh, but then when Jeremiah said, my God, but his word uh, was like fire shut up in my bones. Uh, in other words, when you know who God is, you can't keep quiet. Uh, you can't just sit there and not give God some praise. Uh, but when you know who God is for yourself, you've got to give God some shout and say, hallelujah. Thank God for saving a wretch like me. Hallelujah. Uh, church, one thing I want to let you know is that you don't want to get me started. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not a dead preacher. Amen. From the day God saved me, I got a fire. And this fire, I just can't put it out. Uh, I just don't know how to stop this fire. But there's a fire that's burning within me uh, that has taken me around the world. Uh, and wherever I go, I've got to give God praise. Uh, and I thank God for saving someone like me. Uh, yeah. That i got a testimony. Yeah. I've got a song to sing. Uh, and wherever I go, I'm going to shout it. I'm going to tell somebody that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, because power unto salvation. Uh, I know God. Uh, it's not because my mom and my daddy, but i got a testimony testimony for myself, uh, that I know God for myself. Uh, Amen. Amen. Uh, church, you, 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 can I say this? Ah, Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed, but again, everybody to his own. Uh, uh, levels of faith in God. Uh, but I want to let you know, since March started, when this, this whole thing, and they talk about lockdown, uh, I want to let you know that as a bishop, as a pastor, I've never closed the church doors. Uh, my doors have always been open. Uh, and said, whosoever will, they come in and give God praise. Uh, amen. The church door was always open for people to come on in uh, and give God praise. Uh, amen. When I get into the house of God, uh, and when I stand up, that when I walk into the house of God, I feel the anointing of God. Uh, because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke and gives us the victory again and again. Uh, you can't go to church and not feel God. Uh, if you're in a dead church, there's no God there, you want to pack up and go back home. Uh, but when you go to a church where you can feel God, uh, the anointing is there that break every yoke. Uh, and I'm sure when you think about Sister Helen, I forgot the name that you use, uh, uh, amen, but when you think about Sister Helen, uh, I'm sure she didn't go to a dead church uh, because God is risen. He's alive and he's where well. uh, My God is fire by himself. Uh, I believe Jamaica and said, God don't need no matches. He's fire by himself. God is fire by himself. God will bring a pretty dross. Oh, hallelujah. And so therefore we, we, we learn from a young age how to give God praise. When we think about God and what he has done for me, we've got to jump up and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving someone like me. I don't know about you, but I want to say something, but I'm not sure if I should say it. But some things that drop in my spirit. Uh, because when you think about it, church, there's something. Can I say it? Can I say it? Can I say it? Boy. There's something uh, about people that look like me. Uh, that we're not dead. Uh, we've got some fire. We can't just sit there uh, and don't give God some praise. Ah, uh, uh, there's something about us uh, that we've got a song in the morning time. Uh, there's something about us uh, that we just can't keep quiet. Uh, there's something about that looks like me. Uh, that we've got to give God some praise uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's something about us, church, uh, that God, we got some fire burning in the inside. Uh, there's something about us uh, that we've got to give God a shout. Uh, when I think hallelujah, we got to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why church, excuse me, uh, but I just can't come in and send Sister Helen home. If I want to send her home in style, we've got to give God some praise. Oh, we've got to say, oh, Sister Helen, one day we'll meet you in the by and by. Let me just read a scripture real quick. Let me just read a scripture real quick. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I'm getting up in age now, we need glasses. Amen. So let me make sure I travel with these glasses now. Amen. I, I, I'm not as young as I look. 
Amen. Trust me, I'm not as young as I look. Amen. I'm up there. Amen. Um, I'm way past 50. But I thank God I don't look it till. Amen. And because I'm, I'm, I'm past 50 now and I got a young wife, so therefore, because I got a young wife, I got to sort of match up with her. And because she looks so good the way Sister Helen looked, uh, then therefore I got to make sure that I, I, I walk and match up with my wife now. And so therefore, I, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not ashamed to say, but once in a while I like to get my nails done. Once in a while I like to get my toes done. Uh, because I got to start looking good because my wife looks good. I got to look good with my wife. Uh, and th th therefore, uh, I, I'm, um, if, if I should stand here before you, uh, and therefore uh, I tell my children that there's time when, when they say, Daddy, are you going to put that in your hair tonight? I said, well, wait, wait a minute. Uh, all I'm going to do is put some cream in my hair. I said, Daddy, stop the lying. Uh, because you know you're going to put some black dye in your hair. I said, well, don't tell nobody that. Don't go tell nobody Daddy's putting dye. Uh, all I'm putting my hair is some cream, uh, some black cream to make my hair feel soft and nice. Uh, but don't you go tell me nobody putting dye in my hair. Uh, but church, if I should stand here, don't put no dye. You hear what I'm saying? I Preacher, heard you heard what I'm saying, Pastor? I if I don't put no dye in my hair, my whole head is white. Then you can see my real age. But I'm trying to hide my age from somebody. Up. Amen. So you can never tell my age. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I, 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 I believe that when you, I, I can't try to remember, remember that name. But what was it? Cooling. 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 So when the sister just said, her Auntie Helen was was she cooling? Amen. Was she, she mixed or something, but cooling. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, but I guess maybe, so so maybe then maybe I should go home and call my wife Cooley. Uh -oh. Amen. Because my, my wife is Cooley. Because when I got married, I got married in India. And my wife is from India, so my wife is a Cooley. So when I go home and say, baby Cooley, how you doing today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're looking fine as wine. Uh -oh. Praise the Lord. But I thank God. Uh -oh. So therefore, amen, when you come to the house of God, you should be able to enjoy yourself. Uh -oh. You should be able to laugh and sing uh, and give God some praise. Uh -oh. Because God has been good. 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 Praise the Lord. Good. Hallelujah. But, but there's a scripture that, that is in my heart. All right. And I just want to read it for you. And um, I'm just going to ask Pastor Reverend Banton uh, to help me out with this. All right. So as the maestro today, this afternoon, uh, I'm going to ask, if you can give me some strings. Give me some strings. Just give me some strings. Amen. If you got some strings on that, amen. You can, you can just drop some strings on, on, upon us right now as I read this to you. Amen. Amen. I kind of like this. And I just want to show this to you. How, how many of you here that are right now in the house, uh, don't be afraid to say, but how many of you right now say? Put your hand up. Those who are you are saying. Amen. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't have to even ask you. I can see it. Amen. I can see it. Amen. And those of you who go to church, those of you who don't go to church. Amen. But I believe this is a time now where everyone got to know who God is. You better know your maker. You better know your maker. Amen. Because as, as Reverend said, talk about we're living in the last days. Perilous times are upon us. We're living in difficult times. Amen. Give me something a little different. Give me something different. Amen. Okay, just, just, just go ahead. Forget it. Just, just play something soft. And so therefore, in, in the book of, I know you don't have your Bibles with you, but in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, this is what the apostle writes and says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 
For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thank be to God, which give us up the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, comfort each other with these words. May the Lord bless his word and sanctify it within our hearts. One day, church, one day, we'll be with the Lord. I believe it. I feel it coming back for a church yes, without yes. spot or without wrinkle when you know who God is for yourself. My God, my God. Father, we love you this afternoon. We praise you and we magnify you. We lift you higher, Lord God, because truly you're worthy to be praised. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord thy God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save us, Lord God, that the King hear us when we call. I pray, O oh God, we thank you for the life of Sister Helen Witter, Lord God. We thank you for how good she was and how she helped people, Lord God. I pray, O oh God, that wherever she is right now in your arms, Lord God, in paradise, Lord God, and that you'll hold it, Lord God, until the rest of us come out, Lord God, to meet her again. We believe it, Lord God, that one day you're coming back for a church, and we need to be ready, Lord God. I know many of us, Lord God, are here this afternoon, and we're sad. We got mixed feelings, Lord God. Sometimes we don't know, we can't even believe that she's really gone. But Lord God, I pray, oh God, that our trouble just began. I believe it's written in the word that it says when one is born into this world, we ought to cry. When one leaves this world, we ought to rejoice. Because when we leave this world, our trials and tribulations and sickness and danger is over, Lord God. Now just rest in your arms, Lord God. I pray now that you remember your children. Remember those who are here right now that can hear my voice. So save us. Save us. Watch over us. Guide us. Protect us. Give us insight, foresight, revelation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we give you praise. Whatever they're asking, Lord God, whatever your people are asking for, grant their hearts requests. Grant their heart's request and believe somebody's here right now, Lord God, that's asking you, Lord God. Send an answer to their prayer, Lord God. Because we know your ears not hard, heavy, Lord God, that you cannot hear. Leave your arms short that you cannot bless. So we thank you for this day. As we praise you and we send home, Sister Helen Winter, Lord God. We send her home, Lord God. We thank you for her life. We thank you for those who knew her. Continue to bless them, guide and protect them as we give you praise. Watch over us now as we say yes to your will. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you this afternoon. 
in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. One more song. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see.